Drilling rigs like these bore or drill holes into the earth. Usually they drill to find oil and gas. They work both on land and offshore. Some are big and some are relatively small. Big rigs drill very deep holes, 20,000 feet, 7,000 meters or more. Small rigs may only drill to a few thousand feet or meters. People in the oil industry group rigs into six basic types. Land, jack-up, platform, submersible, semi-submersible, and drill ship. A land rig drills on dry land. They're the most common rig. Light-duty rigs drill holes from about 3,000 to 5,000 feet deep, or 1,000 to 1,500 meters. Medium-duty rigs drill to depths ranging from about 4,000 to 10,000 feet, or 1,200 to 3,000 meters. Heavy-duty rigs drill holes from about 12,000 to 16,000 feet deep, or 3,500 to 5,000 meters. Ultra-heavy-duty rigs drill holes from about 18,000 to 25,000 feet or more, 5,500 to 7,500 meters or more. Crew members can move land rigs on trucks, tractors, trailers, barges, helicopters, heavy rolling gear, skids, and in rare cases, on specialized air pressurized equipment. Small light duty rigs are pretty simple to move. Ultra heavy land rigs can be difficult to move. A jack up rig drills offshore wells. It has legs that support a deck and hull. When positioned over the drilling site, the bottom of the legs rest on the seafloor. Jack-up rigs can drill in water depths ranging from a few feet or meters up to more than 400 feet, over 120 meters. Boats tow a jack-up rig to a location with its legs up. Once the rig-up crew gets the legs firmly positioned on the bottom of the ocean, they can adjust and level the deck and hull height. A platform rig is an immobile offshore structure. That is, once built, it never moves from the drill site. Companies drill several wells from the platform. Platform rigs can be tender-assisted rig. The tender floats next to the rigid platform, which is firmly pinned to the seafloor. Many platform rigs do not have a tender. They are so large that they are self-contained. Big platform rigs include the steel jacket platform, the caisson type, and the concrete gravity type. In deep water, rig builders have to make platforms that yield to water and wind movements. Two compliant platform rigs are the guide tower, and the tension leg. A submersible rig rests on the seafloor when it is drilling. There's flood compartments that cause the rig to submerge and rest on the bottom. When ready to move, workers remove the water from the compartments. This makes the rig float. Boats can then tow the rig to the next site. Rig builders design submersibles to drill in shallow water and in water up to about 175 feet deep, a little over 50 meters. Submersible drilling rigs include the posted barge submersible, bottle type submersible, and the Arctic submersible. A semi submersible rig is a floating offshore drilling rig. It has pontoons and columns. When flooded with water, the pontoons cause the unit to partially submerge to a predetermined depth. The working equipment is assembled on deck. On the drill site, workers can either anchor the rig to the seafloor 
or use a system of thrusters and positioners to keep the rig over the hole. Here they have it anchored. Crew members mount the wellhead and blowout preventers on the ocean floor. Special hollow pipe called riser pipe connects the top of the blowout preventer to the rig. In some cases, the crew uses thrusters to keep the rig over the hole. Called dynamic positioning, the thrusters, which are connected to an onboard computer, keep the rig in position. Some dynamically positioned semi-submersibles can drill in water depths of more than 7,500 feet or over 2,200 meters. When keeping a rig over the hole, drilling crews use the term on station. Here's a semi-submersible rig loaded on a special carrier. The carrier vessel is moving the rig a far distance over the ocean. For shorter moves, the rig owner tows the rig to the drill site. Or, some semi-submersibles are self-propelled. A drill ship is a self-propelled floating offshore drilling unit. It usually uses a subsea blowout control system similar to the one on a semi-submersible. Many pieces of equipment make up a rotary drilling rig. Part of it's on the surface, and part of it's underground, or subsurface. All the equipment has one main purpose, to put a bit at the bottom of the hole, where it can drill or make hole. To put the bit on the bottom, rig crew members screw it into a special pipe. The pipe is called the drill string. Crew members lower the drill string and attached bit into the hole. For the bit to drill, surface rig equipment has to rotate it, unless it's rotated by a mud motor. Equipment also has to put weight on it to force the bit's teeth or cutters into the formation. As the bit rotates, a circulating fluid has to take the drill cuttings away from the bit. Otherwise, the hole would clog up. The fluid which circulates is called drilling mud. To impart rotary motion to the drill string so that the bit can turn, either a top drive or a Kelly and rotary table system is used. Power is transferred from the surface down hole via the drill string. Some rigs rotate the drill string with a top drive unit. Top drives are expensive, but very efficient. Crew members can add drill pipe joints to the drill string very quickly and safely, and they can drill the well more efficiently, with less chance of sticking the drill string in the hole as compared with the Kelly and rotary table. A powerful motor turns a drive shaft, which is connected to the top drive. Crew members make up or attach the drill string to the drive shaft. The drive shaft turns the drill string and bit. Notice that the drill string goes through an opening in the rotary table. The table does not, however, rotate. A link system suspends the top drive unit from the rig's traveling block. Drilling mud enters the unit through the gooseneck to the rotary hose, the flexible line that conducts drilling mud from the pump. A motor and gearbox power the main drive shaft. The crew makes up the drill string to the drive shaft. The built-in inside blowout preventer, IBOP or safety valve, keeps fluids from backflowing up the drill string when the driller closes it. The crew uses the torque wrench assembly to make up and break out, connect and disconnect, the drill string. The elevator links suspend the elevator. The rig crew latches the elevator around the drill string to allow the top drive unit to lift it up or down. A Kelly, a Kelly drive bushing, a master bushing, and a rotary table 
rotate the drill string and bit on some rigs. The Kelly is a heavy tubular device. It usually has either four or six sides. That is, it either has a square or hexagonal cross section. Square Kellys are less expensive than hexagonal ones, but the hex Kellys are stronger, so rigs drilling deep holes often use them. Whether four or six sided, crew members attach or make up the Kelly to the top joint of pipe in the drill string. The Kelly, four sided or square in this example, moves through a square opening in the Kelly drive bushing. The Kelly drive bushing mates with the master bushing, which the rotary table turns. This rotates the entire drill string and attached bit. The Kelly moves down as the hole deepens.